Hello movie fans, and welcome to Mostly Exciting. Netflix offers thousands of movies via its streaming platform. It has been releasing feature-length original films. Although it's often still tough to find something worth watching amid the deluge of choices in Netflix's huge catalog of movies, combined with its inscrutable algorithm, can make finding something to watch feel more like a chore than a way to unwind, since there are thousands of original movies. And so today we narrowed it down to eight of the best Netflix movies of all time. These are the best movies the platform has to offer, a ranking that will change and evolve as Netflix continues its all-out push into original programming in 2020. If you're new and watching from this new channel hit the subscribe button and let's get straight into the 8 greatest Netflix movies of all time below. Number 8. The Ritual. It is a well-done horror film with a lot of guilt and grift which offers terrors to the viewer, leaving you in the dark with these guys, trying to figure out what that thing can mean. In these moments, the forest seems wilder than it is. The ritual is about a group of college friends reuniting for a trip to the forest, but encounter a menacing presence in the woods that's stalking them. Following the sudden, violent death of their best mate, four young men reunite for a hike through the Scandinavian wilderness. Deep in the black, Nordic forest, they find themselves lost in a hell of sinister nightmares and pagan sacrifices. For these ancient woods are home to a malevolent deity which will force them to face the darkness inside themselves. This film makes getting lost in the woods scary all over again. No matter if it's daylight or night. So if you are reuniting with your friends and going camping. Think again. Number 7. Tallulah. Tallulah is such a funny, insightful, and slightly twisted dysfunctional family drama. Tallulah is a young vagrant, cares for a toddler abandoned by her mother. With no family to turn to, she enlists her ex-boyfriend's mom for help. Desperate to get rid of her toddler, a dissatisfied Manhattan housewife hires a stranger to babysit and ends up getting much more than she bargained for. Unknown to Tallulah, Margot is struggling with her own marital problems after her ex-husband Stephen has left her for a gay man. Andreas, and is pressing Margot to finalize their divorce. While Tallulah and Maddie stay with Margot, the three of them bond, Tallulah reveals her fears of forming relationships, and Margot admits to having trouble letting go. However, Tallulah becomes increasingly aware that the authorities are looking for her and Maddie. As Tallulah grows into a mother figure, her on-the-lamb parenting course only makes her more and more of a criminal in the eyes of just about everyone. After a tearful Carolyn tells her that she does want her child, Tallulah reluctantly hands Maddie back to her and is arrested by the police. As Tallulah is taken away, Margot promises to help her however she can. When Detective Richards facetiously asks Tallulah if she has a habit of taking children into protective custody, Tallulah says nothing and smiles ruefully. Number 6. Dolomite is my name. Eddie Murphy portrays real-life legend Rudy Ray Moore, a comedy and rap pioneer who proved naysayers wrong when his hilarious, obscene, kung fu fighting alter's ego, Dolomite, became a 1970s black exploitation phenomenon. Stung by a string of showbiz failures, floundering comedian Rudy Ray Moore has an epiphany that turns him into a word-of-mouth sensation. Step on stage as someone else. Borrowing from the street mythology of 1970s Los Angeles, Moore assumes the persona of Dolomite, a pimp with a cane, and an arsenal of obscene fables. However, his ambitions exceed selling bootleg records deemed too racy for mainstream radio stations to play. Moore convinces a social justice-minded dramatist to write his alter ego a film, incorporating kung fu, car chases, and Lady Reed, an ex-backup singer who becomes his unexpected comedic foil. Despite clashing with his pretentious director, Derville Martin, and countless production hurdles at their studio in the dilapidated Dunbar Hotel, Moore's Dolomite becomes a runaway box office smash and a defining movie of the black exploitation era. It represents a sort of return to the golden days of Murphy, exaggeratingly hilarious film. Number 5. The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Six tales of life and violence in the Old West, following a singing gunslinger, a bank robber, a traveling impresario, an elderly prospector, a wagon train, and a perverse pair of bounty hunters. The Ballad of Buster Scruggs is a six-part Western anthology film, a series of tales about the American frontier, told through the unique and incomparable voice of Joel and Ethan Cohen. The story tells us distinctly about the American West. The Cohen brothers gave some big-name director cred to Netflix by releasing their six-part Western anthology on the streaming service, Buster Scruggs is clearly a cut above most Netflix originals. Not only does it revel in the massive, sweeping landscapes of the American West, but it's a thoughtful meditation on death that will reveal layer after layer long after you finish. Four. Tramps. 
Aspiring chef Danny is struggling to make ends meet, living with his mother and brother in a Polish neighborhood in Queens, New York. Ellie is a girl hardened beyond her years, who returns to New York at the request of a small-time hustler, with her eyes on an easy score. Danny gets a call one night to fill in for his brother on a job. It all seems simple enough. Meet a driver with a briefcase, proceed to a rendezvous spot, and exchange one briefcase for another. But when Danny accidentally swaps the wrong bag, this pair of unlikely criminals are thrown together on a two-day odyssey to get the missing briefcase back. They travel through the boroughs and suburbs of New York City by train, bus, and stolen bicycle they break into a house they tell half-truths about who they are, and they find themselves, in the midst of this chase, beginning to be slowly drawn to one another. A young man and woman find love in an unlikely place while carrying out a shady deal. Despite that mystery, this movie is more about mischief than danger. It gets a lot of mileage out of what could be in that suitcase. Number 3. Okja. A young girl risks everything to prevent a powerful, multinational company from kidnapping her best friend, a fascinating beast named Okja. For ten idyllic years, young Midja has been caretaker and constant companion to Okja a massive animal and an even bigger friend at her home in the mountains of South Korea. But that changes when a family-owned multinational conglomerate Mirando Corporation takes Okja for themselves and transports her to New York, where image-obsessed and self-promoting CEO Lucy Mirando has big plans for Midja's dearest friend. With no particular plan but single-minded and intent, Midja sets out on a rescue mission, but her already daunting journey quickly becomes more complicated when she crosses paths with disparate groups of capitalists, demonstrators, and consumers, each battling to control the fate of Okja while all Midja wants to do is bring her friend home. Bong Joon-ho begins with the gentlest of premises the bond between man and animal and ultimately creates a distinct and layered vision of the world that addresses the animal inside us all. Okja is the heartwarming tale of a girl and her giant mutant pig, brought to life through a mix of digital effects and puppetry that makes a non-existent beast seem as real as E.T. Number 2. The Irishman. An old man recalls his time painting houses for his friend, Jimmy Hoffa, through the 1950s-70s. This biographical crime thriller follows Frank Sheeran as he recalls his past years working for the Bufalino crime family. Now older, the World War II veteran once again reflects on his most prolific hits and, in particular, considers his involvement with his good friend Jimmy Hoffa's disappearance in 1975. In 1975, while on their way to the wedding of Bill's daughter, Russell tells Sheeran that the Dons have become fed up with Hoffa and have sanctioned his murder. Reluctantly, Russell informs Sheeran that he has been chosen as the triggerman, knowing he might otherwise try to warn or save Hoffa. The two drive to an airport where Sheeran boards a plane to Detroit. Hoffa, who had scheduled a meeting at a local diner with Tony Pro and Anthony Giacalone, is surprised to see Sheeran arrive late with Hoffa's unsuspecting foster son Chucky O'Brien and gangster Sally Bugs. They advise Hoffa that the meeting was moved to a house where Tony Pro and Russell are waiting for them and joins them in the car. Entering the house, Hoffa finds it empty and realizes that he has been set up. He turns around to leave at which point Sheeran shoots him twice at point-blank range before leaving the gun atop his body near the entrance. After Sheeran departs, two younger gangsters have the body cremated to eliminate all traces of him. Lastly number 1. Roma. Watching Roma 1 awaits such illuminating details about Cleo's life outside of her employer's family and such a generously forthcoming and personal relationship between Cleo and the children in her care. There's nothing of this sort in the movie, Cleo hardly speaks more than a sentence or two at a time and says nothing at all about life in her village, her childhood, her family. She's a loving and caring young woman, and the warmth of her feelings for the family she works for and theirs for her is apparent throughout. But Cleo remains a cipher, her interests and experiences, her inner life remain inaccessible to Curran. He not only fails to imagine who the character of Cleo is, but fails to include the specifics of who Libo was for him when he was a child. A year in the life of a middle-class family's made in Mexico City in the early 1970s. The most personal project to date from Academy Award-winning director and writer Alfonso Cuarón, Roma follows Cleo, a young domestic worker for a family in the middle-class neighborhood of Roma in Mexico City. Delivering an artful love letter to the women who raised him, Cuarón draws on his own childhood to create a vivid and emotional portrait of domestic strife and social hierarchy amidst the political turmoil of the 1970s. Curran's first project since the groundbreaking Gravity in 2013. And that's all for today's video. Comment what you think of these 8 Netflix movies below. And we really hope that you enjoy the video. 
If you did please hit that thumbs up button below, and if you like to see more please smash that subscribe button.